my name is uh, Alfredo uh, Tierman. Uh, I'm an architect. I I study architecture in Chile. In my early years of uh, education were divided into in the two main schools or the, both of the more, most traditional schools in, in Santiago. First uh, three years in the Universidad de Chile and the second three years in the Universidad Católica. Uh, the contrast of that, um, of those two models of education that I, that I was faced um, to in the beginning were I think quite quite important for my formation because studying architecture in Chile is, is very long, it takes about seven years. Um, so to, to have different perspective and be uh, exposed to two different models uh, of education was, was quite important. Also, both schools are in different parts of the city, which was also uh, very I mean, both situations expose you to different uh, conditions, uh, which somehow gives you a, a broader picture of the things that are going on in the, in the city. And uh, after that, I would say that my, my practice began even when I was in the school, because my final project, what I would call, what people call uh, maybe in the US the thesis project, was a built artifact. So it was either a very big maquette, one-to-one, -one, very big model, or my first built uh, project. And, and during that, um, I was also doing uh, music, uh, which I, I was not thinking that it, that it was going to be important for, for my architectural practice at the beginning, but uh, a few years later, I started to see how different uh, things uh, started to converge. I did several projects with uh, collaborations of, of different people uh, in, in Chile, which I think is also important to mention because uh, I think I've never done anything alone, uh, which is obvious for people that work in the field of architecture, but uh, in, in my early years in Chile, I was exposed to, to very interesting people which, with which we did these collaborations. Um, and later on, I, I moved to the, to the States. I, I studied my master's there. Um, and then uh, I had an idea of a research about the city of Berlin, uh, which I was lucky enough to get uh, support from the ETH in Zurich. Um, to start my PhD about that research. So I, I moved to Berlin and ever since I'm, I'm working on this research in parallel to, to the state of my practice. And what can you tell us about this artifact and how it is related to music and how this has been part of what is today your uh, uh, PhD? Um, again, without, um, without having started with this as a, as a conscious decision um, as some people are gifted or have a big interest in the visual image I always had um, a very strong impulse or attention towards the sonic or the auditory so even if my, my first project was, was a scenography about a film my second project was a collaboration with a sound artist in Chile called uh, Ariel Bustamante and, and through these collaborations, I started to get into the, the realm of the sound, which was in parallel to what I was doing before with, with uh, my music uh, project. So um, this idea of understanding space uh, through sound and not so much through the visual um, was always very rooted in the, in the beginning of my practice. And I started to name these early buildings um, which are smaller than a building, but larger than an, an installation, one would say, uh, artifacts. Um, and, 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 the, and the notion of the artifact erased as, as this scale of interaction in which building something uh, becomes necessary to understand a broader situation, a situation that 
you cannot speak through other means, you need to embody it, and therefore this construction becomes a condensation uh, of, of political, cultural trajectories that each of these projects uh, wanted, to, wanted to tell. And then to, to come back more specific, when I started this research about uh, radio in Cold War Berlin, right, we understand the classic understanding of the city of Berlin is, is this um, divided city by a wall, right, the West surrounded by a wall, very important image for 20th century Western culture, right? But then when we start to see it from the perspective of radio, radio waves could go across the wall. And it's not this only invisible um, energy, which is electricity, right, going ac across these built um, limits, but it's a construction by punctual, again, artifacts. Uh, you have the broadcasting houses, you have research institutes, you have the transmission towers, you have the antennas. So I turn my, my focus to look at Berlin, at these seemingly invisible buildings, some of them anonymous, some of them quite monumental, but located in periphery of the city. And all of a sudden, a new city started to emerge. Uh, one that is not about the monumental political gestures of the East or of the West. Uh, but an architecture uh, that, that spoke about this uh, way of uh, transmitting information and therefore delineating space in a different way, which I think uh, connects a lot to the way in which we inhabit space uh, today. And, and, and I have to say, maybe this is, is my contribution as a, as a foreigner to uh, potential uh, future discourses, because these artifacts that I'm looking at have been often um, detached from the uh, normal uh, or established reading of the, um, of the city. Uh, so, for example, I, I admire the work that uh, Anna Brandelhuber does here in Berlin. I think it's very interesting, uh, both as a pedagogy he does at ETH in his practice in Berlin, and this research that he did about the city called um, it's, it's about the it's about the divided city and how every single institution in Berlin had a mirror on the other side uh, and and I guess my research understands the the city also in in that form uh, but seen from this other perspective of these punctual artifacts that uh, relate to uh, forms of uh, communication. Yeah, okay. mm -hmm. And going back uh, to your practice, mm -hmm. you just complete a very interesting house in Chile. Mm -hmm. uh, can you tell us about this project and perhaps how it is connect with these uh, more research level things that are on, ongoing mm -hmm. in, your, in your head? Mm -hmm. um, so again, the, the, the house that we just completed is uh, one of a series of houses um, that we've been developing. Some of them are built, as the, the one you mentioned, called Casa Uno. Others are under construction and others will never be built, um, unluckily. And we, I mean, we started by, I mean, to look at this phenomenon um, in a similar way that, that the one that I was describing you. Um, I mean, in Chile, by the political nature of the country after the dictatorship, uh, the, the practice of architecture is, is very driven by private uh, impulses, although there is an active um, sector of public competitions and so on, but it's very, it, it, it's very uh, obvious that people start their careers by, by doing uh, houses, so to say. I did not start like that, I started with these other artifacts, but after I left Chile and I started to receive commissions of such buildings, uh, I thought it was an opportunity to reflect on broader conditions uh, of the country by doing uh, one single example. And again, it's this idea that the condensation of building something uh, allows you to understand a broader phenomenon and also act upon it, uh, which I guess I would refer to this double understanding that uh, in which we practice architecture. So these houses, for example, we call them uh, 
the houses as at the end of the world, in which we have trying to rethink uh, the cliche of Chile as an unpolluted and untouched landscape, um, and see it rather as the frontier in which all the global transformations of climate change and political changes are, are leading their forces in, in the country. And through that, we try to, to see what does it mean to build in, in such a context. So uh, that house, for example, um, it's, it's, a, it's in the outskirts of the city and where urban um, ways of living are, are starting to push back. Therefore, there is an idea of bringing ideas from the city to a situation which was previously suburbia. So through the use of courtyards uh, and various um, different courtyards and, and finding a way to break the legislation that you know, allows, forces you to have like a big fence usually with dogs and stuff and the, the life of the house is totally detached um, from the, the life of the street. We've been trying to break those situations by rethinking um, ways of using the, the plan. Um, but again, we, we believe that houses are not uh, self-referential alone, but there are these conditions in which they, for in one way or another, organize territory around them, but at the same time, it embeds, embeds this um, intention of inhabitants to be detached from, from that very situation. <clears throat> in this project, there is also an interest in constructive systems. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, so as we, as I was telling you, the, um, the, the floor plan of the house is, is very, I mean, it, it, it took a, a long time to calibrate certain things because it's very important the use of doors that we have. So, for example, in the floor plan of this house, we overcome two uh, widely used and fairly modern, what would say, architectural tropes, the use of the corridor and the use of the open plan. So by different sizes and ways of sliding and pivoting doors, um, we organize the, the plan of the house in a, in a way in which the domestic program can be um, reshaped in, in different forms. And then we, we used um, to, to clad the house, um, so the, the house basically is a system of walls that defines different kinds of courtyards at the ground level and then on the second level a basket-like structure made out of um, timber kind of floats over this courtyard situation. And then we designed with a company that recently got established in the city, a system of prefabricated panels of uh, five centimeter thick uh, pigmented concrete. So the house renders itself um, almost entirely opaque um, to its surroundings. Uh, and it has this uh, almost monolithic um, nature, um, but it's done using this uh, very uh, reduced uh, level of concrete. So there is, I mean, in, in this situation in which you are interested in how things relate to the outside, the definition of that line, right? What is what defines the inside from the outside becomes a, a, a crucial moment because it's where things uh, collapse. And, um, and we use uh, this uh, technique or technology to, to sort of like negotiate those, uh, those forces. Perfect. And well, back here you are between uh, Berlin and the 88. Mm -hmm and soon you're moving back to the U.S. for teaching. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you see yourself into architecture teaching? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, this, this is something that, that again, has always um, been uh, close to the, to the way uh, I practice architecture, which is, um, I think that architecture is a way of thinking uh, and generally good architects can uh, operate in different kinds of media uh, so in that case for me 
the practice of architecture, the research of architecture, and the teaching of architecture are kind of like three different medias through which uh, this big architectural project that we are slowly starting um, or envision to build, um, it's taking shape. So for me, it's very important and I feel very uh, privileged to, to have the, the possibility to test certain things at the level of research, then implement at another speed and with other level of ambitions and practice, and then go back to teaching, which you get input from very smart and energetic and younger uh, colleagues. Um, so I think that this um, ecology um, through which I think a lot of practices built upon today is, is, very, is very interesting and I, and I think it's, it's important to build upon that. And in this uh, European context, mm -hmm. what is the, that you think that has been the biggest learning so far? Um, I mean, living in Berlin has been uh, a learning situation in itself uh, for me. Um, it's, it's, um, it's a way of inhabiting the city is very different to both uh, American contexts that I was experienced before, the US and Chile. Uh, but it uh, has also been very interesting to, since I'm mostly devoted to this re research these days, uh, to move and live on the site. Uh, to me, Berlin is the site of my research. So I get to talk to people from different generations, I get to visit certain things, I get to interact with the bureaucratic culture, but I also get to interact with the natural, um, sonic culture that people have. Uh, so to move, to live on the site, uh, I think has been uh, the most uh, interesting and intense uh, experience. Would you like to do a project here in the city? Uh, of course, I think every architect would like to build in Berlin, right? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you.